Soviet Union will be pleased to offer amnesty to your wayward vassal. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited Black Eagle review by me, Spitfire, but you probably knew that already. This tank right here has caused me a lot of grief. It's in tier 10. It took me 10 games this morning to be able to get one game to show you all, along with the other game I got yesterday. Better be appreciative, because god I feel like my blood pressure has gone really high. Anyway, let's start off with the strengths of the tank. It's ridiculously fast, it's reload is good, it's alpha damage is pretty good, it's low hold down, it doesn't have a frontal weak spot other than the lower plate, and it's a very small target. Its downsides include a very vulnerable ammo rack, as you can see here. Once you basically see that box, you can pen it, and it has the gun of the T90 MS with 780 pen, which is not a good AP pen. The standard for tier 10 is around 800. Um, it also suffers from weak side armor, and the gun depression, while good for Russians, is not really that great for everything else, but considering it's so low to the ground, you can mitigate that. So. Um, it, this is a premium tank, uh, the Black Eagle slash Object 640, we'll have a look at the 640 for now. Um, as you can see it comes with a, a, a active protection system which shoots down um, just about everything, which is good. It has a really powerful engine, this is basically a T81 crack and you should play it like one. Your lower plate is weak, you're fast, you've got a punchy gun. Um, other things to note about this tank is that it is literally covered with ERA. Like, let's okay, let's go on the armor viewer. Okay, the ERA is literally everywhere. Like, this is the only place to pen to pen the tank, and even then, the lower plate itself is two hundred and fifty four millimeters thick. Apart from that, it's ERA, 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 and ERA just literally everywhere. So penning it with missiles can be an issue, but as said before, the Amarak is incredibly weak and vulnerable. Um, apart from that, it, stand it suffers from the very standard Russian weakness of having weak mudguards. So you either have a shot at the Amarak, or if you're slightly lower tier, you can always go through the treads and track it. And once one of these is tracked, it's very difficult to be able to get out of it. But fortunately, this thing does have a very meaty amount of hit points. So let's compare this with other tier 10s, of which there are many. <laughs> this is going to take a while. Um, Mark, Leo, T14. And of course the X and 1. So uh, as we can see here, amongst the other 125s in the game, which is the T14 and the Type, it has significantly less alpha damage at 40. It has 20 more, it has 20 less penetration. <coughs> God, I sneeze there, sorry about that. Um, and generally speaking, it has the lowest alpha penetration of just about all tanks in the tier, except for the Challenger ATG with its AP rounds, which sits roughly around somewhere around the same, 780. Um, is the gonna work? Okay, that's weird. Um, anyway, uh, the DPM is okay. 5,823 beaten out by the Merc, the Alte, the Amata, and of course the XM1. But, of course, you do have better DPM than the Leopard, a Challenger, a Type. So, it's not all good. And at last, you do have a very punchy reload time at 6.8, mean that, meaning that you can, in fact, perma trap people, which is a good idea to do. Apart from this, you have a very meaty slug of hit points at 3,750, which is pretty good. It's better than the Alte, the Leopard, the Armada, and the Type. Um, and the Hull is really difficult to get rid of. Um, since it has no turret weak spot and it's covered by ERA and composite armor, you're not getting through the front hull no matter what, and its turret is basically impenetrable, as you can see here. 
Apart from this, it's extremely fast with only the Type 99 being faster. 85 kilometers an hour is absolutely ex exceptional, and it's incredibly high, 0 to 32. It is only beaten up by the Alte, the Amada, and the Type, and it's also incredibly light as well, being just 48 tons, meaning that ramming other tier tens is not a good idea. However, its hold reverse is somewhat lacking compared to the types, but it does have relatively good camouflage, and the view on the move is okay. Apart from that, gun, gun depression is pretty good as well, and the maximum deviation and aim time is pretty bog standard for tier 10s. Uh, there's a couple of commanders you can go with this one, but due to your low alpha damage, I would recommend you use Cortez. Um, simply put, the chance of dealing max damage is basically you want to deal 726 all the time. Um, and in all of my games that I'll be showing, or two of them, um, pretty much roll for 726 all of the time. Uh, other commanders to use, I guess, if you were really went into, um, would probably be Rachel for that reload time when you're near enemy vehicles. But do uh, you really need to reload any faster? It's up to you, really. Um, apart from this, standard crew things. Uh, I'd always recommend going for off-road driving and field repair. And lastly, do the twist or preventive maintenance. Apart from that. Um, the ammo choice is, is, is pretty okay, however the 850 pen of the missiles does leave a little bit to be desired with the heat rounds being substantially more punchy, and thanks to the soft kill APS, single shot missiles are not a good idea anymore. You could load high explosive if you really wanted to, but it's tier 10. Apart from that, retrofits to choose, I choose a Amarak retrofit, simply um, so my Amarak doesn't blow up the moment, the moment anybody shoots my giant turret bustle, if you can understand that. Uh, we also have an advanced MRS and a gun breach, and you could always go for a air, air induction pre-cooler, but I decided to go with an improved Pioneer toolkit, which gives me a 60% boost to track repair time and a 35% boost to standard repair time, which lowers it to around roughly 5 seconds. As you can see, that will come in handy. Um, apart from this, it's really fast. It's fun um, and if it was on sale I mean, you could get it I'd say go get it for now well let's have a look at some games so uh, this game I was saved by the trap repair time I'm gonna tell you um, but a couple of things to know is this thing's incredible speed and the reload time as well as the damage with Cortez so um, standard tier 10 game a couple of tier 9s running around who are basically food Apart from, say, the Centauros. Um, on this map, I don't really enjoy going to the bottom simply because it's a slug fest, and of course, the lack of penetration, the very noticeable weak spot in the hole means you can't go hole down. I don't want to go there. So, usually, I go to the hill, and I like going hole down on the hill. Um, other places to go on this map, not really. This is a very phalanx oriented tank. Um, if you're frontal towards the enemy, you're great. If you're on, if, if they're on your side, you have that giant ammo bustle which will be taken apart and you will get ammo racked. So I want, I want you to notice how quickly this thing accelerates. Just keeps going. At this point this is the max speed for other tier 10s. About, around 70ish. This thing has a top speed of 85. Jesus Christ. I told you it was a T81 steroids. So anyway, I'm going to go straight to the hill on this one. Uh, since I'm roughly one of the fastest tanks here, only beaten out by the wheeled vehicles. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm really confident I can get there before they can. While the Alte and maybe the T14s have like better acceleration than I do, I have a higher top speed. So Alte come up. Um, unsure what he was going to do. Um, here at this point, I was kind of hoping to track him. Um, but unfortunately, I bounced on the hull. However, somebody else did hit him. And um, unfortunately, my team here are going to kind of just sit. They're not really going to help out, which is annoying. The XM ones at least could help out, as well as that ulti over there, but... Oh well. Rip. So, moving on, uh, the 640 can be a really great hold down tank. There's no um, whole weak spot. Well, there's no frontal weak spot other than the extremely weak lower plate, which is weaker than the Altes anyway. So, I'm going to put one into the 90MS, 726 using Cortez. Um, it's pretty damn good. Shoot through, shoot through the thing there, um, but as you can see, um, 
and you may have saw is that the lower plate can actually be quite strong at the front part of the tank and that's where Centauro is aiming. And using Cortez means I can get rid of the Centauro in roughly two more hits. As you can see there. However, this is when I fuck up. Get trapped into a rock. And this guy is going to take me apart. Now, the Alte has a reload time of roughly about 3 seconds be between shots, but it has a 7 second reload when it comes to its firepower. So that meant that if it didn't, I am able to beat his repair, I'm, I'm able to beat his reload time with my repair time. And now I'm uh, feeling a little bit self-conscious about myself, so I'm pretty sure everybody would. Alte comes up again, slaps me again, that's an incredible screw up on my part. Um, I shouldn't have done that. If I'd have, if I hadn't backed into that rock, I think I would have been on a hell of a lot more hit points. But being on basically a one shot very much changes my perspective. At this point, I realised that um, I've screwed up, but I can still be a force. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still fast enough to chase down the TDs. I still have a good enough reload time to be able to beat, say, the T14. And the mark. If push came to shove, so I'm not completely useless. So anyway, um, this thing's accuracy and penetration at long ranges is pretty okay. Uh, as you can see, I trapped the XM1 over there. I'm gonna fire again. Guaranteed kill. Right around 3,400. That's that's okay. Doing do, doing your damage and hit points for MBTs is pretty much expected. Um, the problem being, of course, is this thing's the fact it has a T90 mass gun. So for now, I, w I was still kind of paranoid that uh, the rest of my team is going to need support, but then I see the Wilk over there. Um, so here's the situation. Either I can trade with these tank destroyers by sitting up here, or I can use my speed and go all the way down to um, around roughly E7. And basically I would do spawning damage and make sure they can't peg my lower hole weak spot. Now next patch, the Black Eagle will be getting a turret ring weak spot, which means that the usual playstyle of this thing, which is aggressive getting get into people's faces, won't be viable anymore, but I don't think it'll matter that much to the tank. You'll still be low profile, you'll still be fast, you'll still have amazing armor. So, mm, a turret weak spot isn't really that bad of a deal, to be honest. Um, the only problem here is that, of course, I'm on low hit points. 726, 726, you get it with Cortez. So I can't exactly push up to people. Anyway, I'm on 5,000 damage at this point. That's that's okay. That's that's a pretty reasonable amount of damage, uh, to be honest. And I'm, I'm still very paranoid of this Centauro, to be honest. I really, really don't like, um, because if he misses me, he's got a two second shot delay before the next one. So a little bit paranoid about that. For now, however, um, I'm kind of counting on this T90 mess to be my guinea pig. Okay, he's not getting shot at by the Centauro. That means I can start moving up now. And you're going to see the reload time of this thing come into play here. As well as the fact I did actually hit a couple of shots I wasn't supposed to. Well, at least you didn't see. So 6.8 seconds. Bam, 726 damage. Seven hundred and twenty six damage. So overall, it was a pretty speedy game. Um, the fact I was able to go all the way down there, if I was in say a slow attack, that will might might have been able to hit me, the Centauro would have well, but this is the fastest MBT in tier ten, so if you if you go full out, it can be very difficult for enemies to hit you, you're small. Uh, terrain will cover you, of course, but the downside being is your side armor is really weak. So anyway, let's have a look at the post game stats. And I did significantly better than I intended to. Just 7,833 damage. Of course, 738,000 credits as well. And I'm not running any boosters, just a premium account and the tank itself, which is amazing, by the way. Um, as you can see there, a lot of good shots happened. Not bad, really. A couple of kill assists. Uh, and roughly you can see here, two shots, two shots, two shots, two shots, one shots. That's how the game goes, really. Some spotting damage. And I get second on the team.
which isn't bad, to be honest. The RTI team had an amazing game, of course. Um, shots fired, 16, 13 landed on target with three misses, and the potential damage I could have done would have been about 8,055, so, yeah. Uh, apart from that, I bounced 1,400 damage, and, well, the Alte basically really screwed me over, but the good slug of hit points I had meant I was able to get away relatively unscathed. So let's have a look at how this thing actually even manages to survive hits, because trust me, this game is going to be trippy. So uh, this one I'm platooned with uh, Decound and Capian, and at the moment I'm being currently molested by a challenger. Fortunately, the free aim bug is still the thing. So uh, this is going to be more of a defensive game from us. Um, safe to say, this wasn't the greatest game I've ever played. Um, I only did about 4,500, 5,000 damage in this one. Um, we were very much ex ex expecting to face a giant hammer coming down with us, since this is a very favourite place for the Russians to go. And there are a lot of Russian players on the other team. Along with two platoons, um, one entire platoon of CZP. So yeah, we were expecting a lot of shit to do. Uh, Decound over there, if you're watching this, um, this is your embarrassment forever, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and I think me and Capian were very much, you know, when the Spartans in 300 like see the arrows coming at us, you'll get a sense of what that's like in a couple of minutes. So Challenger 2 ADU comes up first, the penetration means I bounced on the lower plate, not good. T4 Nomada as well, as well as a type. Um, there is some pretty shitty aiming by me here, and at this point Decount is getting hammered by things. So there's nothing we can do to help him. You see me quick, 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 quickly switching between targets there. Sorry about the stutter. There is a lot of shit flying around in this game. Um, and most of it bounces, actually. Oh, back off. Artillery coming up. So yeah, and uh, here's the thing. They're still coming. <laughs> that uh, piece where you see that ADU over there, and uh, KPN starts asking for us to back off. Of course we don't. We, we're stubborn little shits. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, we attempt to push forward at this point. It's not that much of a great idea, to be honest. Alte is over there, K21 as well. And uh, this is when the uh, when the bounces start happening. And I mean a lot of bounces. I want you to count the number of times this happens, okay? Unfortunately, I only smoked up just as Capian was about to die, he literally said, I want some smoke, I smoked, I'd be died. I'm sorry, Capian. Get ready. Get ready for all those bounces, because it's going to happen. Uh, as you can see there, I'm using the wreck of Capian's tank. Bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> that was four in a row, I think. But bounce again. <laughs> and another bounce. And another one. Uh, this thing can be incredibly difficult to kill. Um, trust me on that one. And K21 over there. I thought I hit him. Not sure if I did. Never bounce. <laughs> I'm 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 still on full health. Loads of shit is being done right now, and and I and I haven't actually been damaged once. They're just bouncing on my on the lower plate, which, despite being weak, is so low to the ground, you might actually end up hitting the front plate instead, or the uh, frontal glacis of the tank. So anyway, at this point the Merkov is down. Uh, both teams are pretty battered at this point, to be honest. Uh, this is when I really make a mistake. So I go down here, thinking that the uh, enemy's not there, but those K21s are still there, and I don't know why, to be honest. Um, of course there's a platoon of them and there's the other guy as well, but I, I, I don't understand that it never bounced. <laughs> I think he was fine. I think that was a heat round. Bounce! <laughs> oh no, that, was, that, that wasn't a bounce. But you get the idea. Unfortunately I miss on that guy.
so at this point I feel like we've got a pretty decent shot of winning, the enemies being rolled up and everything. Uh, unfortunately there is a K1 on behind me. Uh, this is where things start to go horribly wrong. Never bounce. Never bounce. The K21 ones could pen me, you know, but I, I, I feel like they're shooting at the side and not the Amarak. Bye, Alte, have fun. Yeah, uh, this is not going to go well. The friggin' Alte over there as well. At this point, I'm trying to use that wreck of him for cover, which is not a bad idea, really. Um, but at this point, you can see we've probably lost this game. They have far better... Their MBTs are in far better shape than ours, and they're going to start running up our flank. And the K21s are in really good fire support positions. So, uh, this is the unfortunate nature of tier 10. There's a lot of stupidity going on. There's a lot of rushing. There's a lot of really stupid stuff. But yeah, I just don't understand why they're not. I mean, th these these guys did kind of do a disservice by not aiming for the Amarak. Um, it is a bit funny. You can also see the ERA plates on there as well. Um, to be honest, even without the ERA plates, the turret would still be incredibly strong. I'll try and shoot for that K21 over there. Most of the damage in this game is actually blind shots, by the way. Oh, shit. Alte, 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 Alte. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh, never bounce. <laughs> but at some point, you will see the ridiculous survivability of this tank. Okay, there he is. Um, and also, the uh, the thing I did say about this uh, thing's ability to just, once you get into somebody's face, they can't pen you. Look at this coming on here. He can't pen me at all. All I have to do is just to keep myself in this guy's face. I just have to wear down his uh, ready rack. Um, and, if, and of course, if I can do that, I can kill him. And uh, here's the unfortunate part of this Alte. Okay, he's on 24 hit points, and uh, you'll go over a pretty decent screw up here. I'm uh, so stressed at this point, I shit the ground and. Yep, still another bounce. This thing's really difficult to kill, by the way. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look at the results of that match, because uh, that was. That was kind of special. Are you ready for this? Because, uh... Oh boy. Okay, 4,356 damage done. Uh, some spot damage done to those guys. Most of the damage was done on that ult. I probably could have killed him if I didn't miss. Um, didn't really do that well. The enemy had a far better fun than we did. Uh, 17 shots fired, 11 landed on target, 6 misses. Uh, pretty usual. Uh, could have done maybe 7,200 damage. But uh, this is this is insane. 14,191 damage bounced. 7,000 from, from uh, non-pen hits, 3,000 from ERA, and 650 by APS. I received 32 hits. This thing is... Tough. Unless you shoot the turret, of course, which I don't understand why they didn't do that, but oh well. So yeah, this is a this is a fun, fast tank. Um, especially in PvE where the bots for some reason just can't ever bring themselves to shoot the lower plate. So you're basically immune to most of the bots in the game. The T15s can't pain you, the leopards can't pain you, you're completely immune to them. Dunno why. Anyway, um, the Centaur 120 review is due for the next week, and there will be a poll in the description of this video for the reviews, which will be done after the 120. I hope you liked it, and my final verdict for the Object 640 is I give it one Battle of Stalingrad over 10 Rush Bs. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you all there for next time, guys. Have fun, and take care.